Does your radio produce broadcast interference? Have your neighbors already complained your radio transmissions? Then this video will be interesting for you. Stay tuned. So welcome to TRX Bench. With the episode about common mode distortion and what is the job of a balloon. Yeah, we want to check out what is the job of a balloon. Everybody knows balloons like this. We all know that uh, these balloons are somewhere installed to our antenna system or that it is between our radio and our antenna. But do we really know how they work and uh, what they really need to do? So that is what uh, we want to uh, find out today. And uh, we want to build a balloon today. We want to check if the balloon is really doing its job. And uh, then at the end, um, we will be able to use a balloon on the right place in the right uh, in the right way uh, to our antenna or radio system and we all may already know that uh, there are hundreds of uh, different types of balloons on the market so they are all built in a different way so um, you know the uh, core material uh, is different the size is different and uh, uh, how uh, it uh, was uh, turned or the wire was turned on so there are really so many different ways how to do to produce a balloon so the question is do they really work and uh, do they perform in the right way and uh, you know that is something I doubt I doubt that uh, the balloons out in the field out at uh, all the different radio stations are really working in the right way and that they really do the expected job. Of course, not all, but uh, I'm sure that there are too many balloons on the market which uh, do not really doing it job. And uh, to understand it a little bit better, I thought we should uh, a little bit more look into that and uh, think about how we can uh, make things better. Yeah, and therefore I have uh, spoken to many radio operators and um, when I have asked them, hey, what is a balloon for? I have uh, got the, I've got uh, one answer very often and that is that you know the balloon has uh, to do a job in transforming the impedance from our radio which uh, is known as a 50 uh, ohm system and that uh, then on the uh, other side uh, of our balloon we will have the um, antenna impedance and we know we have uh, many different uh, antenna impedance depending on the antenna we are using. I do not want to go into that but uh, here our example shows a 4 to 1 or 1 to 4 balloon so our 50 ohm which is uh, in our is present in our radios um, will get uh, transferred or transformed into 200 ohm. And that is uh, the first argument I always heard when I uh, ask uh, what it is all about. And uh, hmm, is that really the first job a balloon has to do? Okay, so let's investigate, for instance, uh, this balloon here. So that uh, is a very often used uh, design. And um, well, uh, we have here uh, our uh, cork side. So that uh, is our 50 ohm impedance. 
And here at uh, the other side, so let me call it uh, the output of our balloon, we uh, would normally have uh, our antenna. And uh, in uh, our uh, experiment here, I'm simulating uh, a dipole or a balanced, uh, let me more say, or better say, a balanced uh, antenna. And uh, as I already said, this is a one to four balloon. So that means our input impedance is uh, 50 ohm and our output impedance will be 200 ohm. And therefore I have here 200 uh, ohm. And uh, this uh, 200 ohm here are uh, simulating our antenna. So that means if this balloon is uh, converting the impedance in the right way, then when I go here into uh, the system with uh, my mini uh, vector network analyzer, which is a 50 ohm system, right, we will see a low SWR if the impedance transformation is working in the right way. And uh, yeah, let us simply check if that is true, if we really uh, are able to get a low SWR with this configuration. Okay, and here is our result. And uh, what we can uh, easily see is that, uh, yeah, I'm uh, here scanning the entire shortwave band. So I'm scanning here from uh, 1 megahertz up to 30 megahertz. And uh, what we can uh, see here, uh, while our uh, vector uh, network analyzer is uh, sweeping, we see with the red line our SWR. And uh, this here is uh, our 1, 2, 5. So that means 1.5, 1, 2, 1. 1.5 um, line. So that is a uh, acceptable SWR. And uh, the blue line is uh, our, is our, um, the return loss. And uh, well, what we can see is that uh, here at where I have set the marker to, which is here, so that is uh, 28,550 megahertz, which uh, is in the 10 meter band. And uh, we see that our SWR is 1.35. So that is really a nice SWR. And uh, yeah, what is this? Uh, result telling us, it is simply telling us that our balloon down here is uh, converting the 50 ohm, which uh, is here in the input, to our 200 ohm at uh, present at uh, the output of our, of our, our balloon. And uh, therefore, we really have a nice and low SWR. And you might now conclude, well, fine, this balloon is doing right job, no doubt. Hmm. The question is again, is this really the first job? And I want to say you, no, it is not. It is a job. It is the second job, but it is not the first job. Just remember what a balloon is. A balloon stands for balanced and unbalanced. So that means the balloon has the job to balance an unbalanced output and our radio output our coax radio output is non-balanced, but our antenna is a balanced one. And the main job of a balloon, and that is where the word comes from, is to convert an unbalanced system into a balanced system. Ah, uh, well, and you might already wonder why that is so important. 
So why do we really need to get an unbalanced output converted into a balanced system that it, it, that it fits to our antenna? And that is so important to attenuate our common mode distortion. So that is what it is all about. We need a block against common mode current. And therefore we need a balloon who is able to transfer from unbalanced to balanced and with that if a balloon is doing that job perfect we will really have a very high common mode current attenuation and that is what it is all for okay and uh, to understand the whole story we need to understand a little bit what common mode current is and uh, how uh, it uh, happens that uh, somehow common mode current is present and uh, well therefore I have this little model here which uh, will explain a little bit what uh, is really going on. So um, just what we have here. So we have here our radio and uh, we know uh, a radio is a, a source as long as we transmit and um, therefore we have our coax uh, cable which is uh, connected to our radio and uh, you know the uh, screen um, is uh, connected to ground and that is what uh, we can see here. Then we have uh, our coax cable and uh, this here uh, will be a model for uh, the coax cable. So we have here our inside uh, wire and uh, we have here our screen and uh, in between there is uh, the uh, dielectrica and uh, well in this case the coax cable is uh, directly connected to uh, antenna and that is a balanced antenna and uh, well if we now here look a little bit uh, what it is so we can uh, find this current arrows here and um, <clears throat> well what we see here we have here uh, current one which is here going down uh, to the radio and of course it always needs to be a closed uh, circuit so therefore we have uh, here our ground and the ground is uh, connected uh, via our, uh, a, uh, our HF connector to our coax cable as well and uh, so the current will go here over our screen which uh, is a shielding uh, at least of our coax cable and uh, you see then here our current arrows uh, once again and um, what you see under normal conditions we would have here a differential current and that is clear so normally here our atmosphere would uh, be um, yeah, the medium where uh, it works into and uh, that is then our close uh, loop and uh, you see we have here our I1 uh, which is our current 1 and current 2 and you see uh, the arrows have uh, different directions so that is differential current and that is what we need. What we never need is common mode current and well now we have the problem that uh, our antenna is uh, a balanced one and uh, it is directly connected to our earth um, as uh, it comes over our coax line and uh, now uh, 
you know, a, a balanced system, our antenna and our non-balanced system, our radio and the coax cable, gets now in a kind of conflict and uh, suddenly uh, you have some additional currents flowing here at the outer side of our coax cable and that is now really the problem because now you suddenly see that uh, we have a additional current it is uh, the I3 which is going down here it jumps over from the inner side uh, of our uh, screen to the outer side of uh, our screen so that uh, uh, HF is present at uh, the outside of uh, our coax cable but the most uh, critical thing is that we have uh, two current arrows which uh, go in goes in the same direction and when uh, it goes in the same direction then that is common mode current and that is what we really do not need because this common mode this uh, common mode current produces broadcast interference and that is really the problem well, and to understand that a little bit uh, better, I have this little drawing here um, that uh, you might have an idea uh, how uh, or where it comes from that uh, our output of our radio, so this here is uh, a block diagram of uh, our radio or in particular it is uh, the power amplifier and uh, well uh, normally uh, we have uh, two transistors working here in our radio and you see that uh, we have uh, two coils here working for um, yeah uh, for one half wave uh, as you if if you like and then uh, we have here a transformer and uh, you see uh, this uh, balance system with, uh, which uh, is, uh, is there because of our two uh, transistors handling uh, each of them handling one half wave uh, we have uh, the balanced one and uh, now we uh, transfer it here we transform it into uh, the secondary uh, side of uh, this transformer here so this is a broadband uh, transformer and uh, there we have connected our um, our uh, PL uh, connector and uh, the PL connector is connected to ground and then we have our coax cable right and uh, yeah you see that uh, it all happens in our two days radios that uh, we convert our available, yeah, let me call it available, balanced system, we uh, convert it in a non-balanced system that we can use our coax cable and coax cable is really so easy to handle, it uh, is uh, much uh, easier uh, to uh, put uh, in your uh, house to install it uh, uh, up to the roof and uh, what have we so therefore we find always uh, in uh, two-day uh, radius you know a corks system an unbalanced uh, cork system but uh, if we put now a balloon here in between which is now able to adapt our non-balanced system to the balanced antenna then you know we do not create this uh, common mode current because a balloon and uh, as it is uh, and as it is uh, constructed and produced is able to suppress this common mode uh, current and uh, therefore if this balloon is doing the job 
in the right way, then we have here on the output side a balanced system and now we are connecting a balanced system which is the output of our balloon to our balanced uh, antenna and then there is no way to create a common mode current in any way and therefore this is really uh, the device you need that uh, it is not possible that your whole uh, coax cable becomes part of uh, your antenna as uh, it is here in uh, this example. In this example where we do not have the balloon, uh, you know, the coax cable and the whole system becomes part of the antenna and you have uh, the uh, HF, the high frequency uh, on the outside of the coax cable and that then is uh, really the reason why it is producing interference. I mean it is much more to tell about that and how it really happens and you know you, you can really talk uh, hours, you can uh, most probably talk and uh, teach uh, weeks about uh, how it really works but uh, I think this uh, will uh, give you the uh, idea how uh, it all uh, hangs together and uh, yeah important to have the balloon to get the unbalanced side to our balanced antenna in the right way connected. And now, as we know what uh, the main job of a, of a balloon is, it, uh, we, we, we directly uh, um, wonder if uh, this here is really able to attenuate the current, uh, the um, common mode current, and uh, if this construction will really help to avoid uh, broadcast interference and therefore yeah we need to measure it to understand if this balloon is doing its main job okay so that we are able to test it right I have uh, produced here a little test circuit so that is uh, the balloon uh, we have uh, seen before and uh, now we want to check if this balloon, this con construction is able to suppress, to attenuate the common mode current. And therefore, um, as you may uh, already see here, uh, the uh, input, right, is uh, going here from our signal line to yeah, the input and to the screen. Yeah, you may uh, see it here. I go a little uh, closer. So this here is uh, our signal, uh, our incoming uh, signal, and uh, I have only split it here over 225 ohm resistors, and uh, one uh, is going here into the line and uh, the second is uh, going to uh, the screen and uh, that means as we have the same signal and same current arrow pointing in the same direction yeah, we have a signal the same signal on both lines on the input and the screen so that is no differential any longer so that is really common mode current and this common mode current what uh, we are producing here um, in a kind uh, of uh, uh, an artificial way right have to get attenuated uh, by our balloon so that means at the output all right which uh, is here and I take it of course here in uh, the middle of uh, our uh, artificial antenna right 
so we pick it here right uh, in the middle and if the balloon is working in a perfect way then we should see a high attenuation but minimum we should have an attenuation of um, 20 dB so that is the minimum what uh, is required and as long we have here a balloon um, which uh, is uh, converting our impedance right uh, so this is a one two four a transformer as well and that means uh, we have uh, to handle here uh, a little bit uh, the measurement with a correction factor so that means with a one to four um, transformer which we have here we need to correct our um, our reading by by a fear uh, by a sorry by 4 DB okay so let's see how uh, we are gonna measure it therefore we uh, take uh, our tracking uh, generator and uh, here is our signal uh, output and uh, from the tracking generator and the tracking uh, generator is sweeping from uh, 1 megahertz up to 50 megahertz so that means uh, the entire screen here is uh, 50 uh, megahertz or 49 and uh, this here is uh, our spectrum analyzer input and uh, if I connect here if I connect here a normal coax cable nothing in between then of course you see this here no you can't see it sorry so this uh, here is our zero line and uh, you can uh, see it here yeah, that uh, over the entire bandwidth it is uh, yeah, more or less uh, zero uh, attenuation and uh, that is what uh, we expect if uh, we switch here a loop with a coax cable so that uh, is just fine but now we will replace our coax cable cable with uh, our test circuit with our 4 to 1 balloon all right our test circuit uh, is connected and we are feeding here our common mode signal into our balloon and uh, let's see what we have here on the screen if we get some focus hello focus no focus mm. so let me change here a little bit uh, the light and uh, yeah maybe we are able to uh, see it right now and what you see is once again, considering we are feeding in a common mode signal, which should be attenuated at minimum 20 dB. And we know that uh, this line here is the 0 dB line. And we have seen with the coax cable that uh, our line was exactly, our tracking line was exactly here on this line. So that means 0 db attenuation now if i go here with my marker you can see here the marker over the entire bandwidth you see here that uh, our analyzer is reporting minus 3.6 or 7 uh, dbm and that means it is uh, as uh, we have here our zero dbm line of course so that is uh, equal to 3.7 dB so the attenuation over and uh, watch here uh, this figure is more or less over the entire bandwidth it is only 3.7 or what is it it is reporting uh, 4. Point whatever but uh, it is not better than 4 and considering that with our 4 to 1 
uh, transformer in this te test configuration we have to calculate our correction factor which is uh, normally in this configuration 4 dB that means that there is at the end no there is no common mode attenuation so that means this balloon is not able to do its main job and that means you definitely will produce broadcast interference with a device like this well this is a kind of shocking and uh, well, the question right now is, uh, is our measurement right or did we something wrong? So therefore, let us uh, check this uh, balloon here. So this is a very often used balloon. So this is a one to one balloon. And uh, this is therefore really used as a common mode uh, current attenuator and uh, this one is also used uh, with uh, for instance all uh, the spider beams and well let us check if uh, this balloon here is doing any better and uh, well we then also can check if uh, our measurement our test setup is it right is it working or not so therefore let us check this one, shall we? Okay, so this is now exactly the same test circuit uh, as we have uh, done it uh, with uh, the first one. And uh, yeah, we are feeding again here our common mode uh, signal. And uh, so that is input, of course, we see it because we have here our Corx uh, connector, right? And uh, here is uh, our output to the uh, antenna but in this case as I already said this is a one to one uh, balloon so uh, I had uh, to change here our resistor so it is not uh, 200 ohm any longer so now it is of course uh, 50 ohm as it is a 50 ohm uh, as it is a one to one uh, balloon and uh, so exactly the same and uh, let's see what we have now on the screen Oh, wow, this looks completely different. And, uh, hmm, so now we have obviously uh, attenuation. You can uh, clearly see it. I mean, we have uh, still here uh, 50 uh, megahertz, and as I already said, this balloon uh, is uh, connected to a spider beam. And, uh, well, therefore, we do not really need to, to go up to uh, 50 megahertz. So let me set it uh, to uh, 30 megahertz, which uh, is now uh, much uh, better. And uh, yeah, so let's see what uh, we uh, have here. Um, uh, one second. Uh, one second yeah so it is now right and uh, let me go here with uh, our marker to uh, 28 yeah 2874 so that is fine and what you can clearly see can you I hope yes we have here a attenuation of 34 dB so that means our common mode signal is really attenuated by 34 or it is almost 35 dB and uh, yeah if we go here to this uh, point so this is uh, 21 uh, megahertz so it is uh, the 15 uh, meter band more or less and here our where is it here our 20 meter band we have still 32 uh, db attenuation and uh, you simply see that is really a very very good attenuation so this one-to-one -one balloon is working perfect for his first job attenuating all the common mode current 
Okay, if we go now here uh, to the uh, lower frequencies, so let me say here to 1.9, 1 1.9 uh, megahertz, so that is where the marker is right now, and we see that uh, we only have 10 dB attenuation and I told you that we minimum should have 20 dB that uh, it is really a efficient attenuator for our common mode current and uh, I also told you that uh, we have a correction uh, factor which uh, we need to take into consideration but uh, this is a one-to-one -one, uh, balloon and uh, therefore our correction uh, is only 2 dB so in this uh, case that uh, would mean uh, we really have 8 dB um, attenuation in the 160 meter band and that is not efficient but once again this um, balloon is used with the spider beam and the spider beam uh, starts at uh, 20 dB uh, sorry at 20 uh, meter band so uh, tw uh, 14 uh, megahertz and uh, therefore uh, we do not really care for our 160 meter band and as well if we go to the 80 meter band so let me go to 3.7 megahertz so you see we have here 16 correction factor uh, 2 dB so that means 14 dB attenuation for 80 meter band which is not sufficient and if we go to the 40 meter band so let me go to 7 uh, 7 uh, 140 and now you see we have uh, 22 correction factor 2 which means 20 dB attenuation and that means that this balloon already would do a very nice job uh, at uh, the 40 meter band. So why is that uh, important? Uh, it is important that you know that this uh, balloon is very good if you have an antenna which goes from let me say uh, a 20 meter band up to the 10 meter band then this is really an efficient um, balloon but if you are using this balloon for 160 meter and for 80 meter then this one is definitely wrong because this is not able to attenuate um, our uh, common mode uh, current in the right way for this both bands and therefore it is really important that uh, we understand what's really going on here in this configuration therefore once again not for 160 and not for 80 meter okay so now we have tested uh, this guy for uh, common mode uh, attenuation and uh, so that was fine so now let's check it for it uh, second uh, now not for it second job for the second parameter and we know the second parameter is that uh, it will deliver the right uh, SWR because without a right SWR uh, across the uh, complete or the entire bandwidth it uh, would not be helping uh, us very well so therefore we need to check is the SWR right or not and here is a graph and uh, what we easily see is that uh, the SWR is really good over the entire bandwidth up to 30 megahertz and uh, we have here at uh, 28,550 megahertz we, we uh, still have uh, uh, 1.36 uh, as uh, SWR and uh, 
we have uh, sufficient uh, return loss so everything is fine and the conclusion is this is really a nice balloon for uh, the spider beam antenna but it wouldn't be a good idea for uh, 80 or 160 meter antenna dipole or uh, whatever so that is very important to know and uh, to understand well and of course uh, there is a question is there a balloon which uh, deliver also a high attenuation on uh, 160 meter and uh, 80 meter and uh, therefore uh, I have uh, done uh, this one for uh, test purposes and uh, the result is uh, quite nice so yeah let me uh, connect uh, this balloon here to our test configuration and uh, yeah let's see how this guy here performs okay and uh, I have now this balloon here in uh, the same uh, test configuration and yeah let us check how this balloon performs regarding common mode attenuation and have a look what a kind of beauty so again 1 megahertz up to 30 megahertz is uh, our scanning range and uh, here the marker is at uh, 1.8 megahertz so that means around uh, 160 meter band and we find already 26 dB common mode attenuation and that is really great even if uh, we have uh, to uh, calculate with our correction factor of 2 this is once uh, again a 1 to 1 uh, balloon so that means we have uh, to uh, to uh, calculate our uh, 2 dB correction factor so that would mean we have still 24 dB attenuation common mode attenuation even on 160 meter and if I go along here to uh, 3.6 uh, you see already 31 dB attenuation and I can go here uh, to 20 meter and we have uh, 73 okay, okay all, always remember and consider the 2 dB so that means uh, 35 dB attenuation and that is uh, the same over the entire band so you see that uh, we really have differences between all the available uh, balloons which are on the market and I really can't go through all the different models which uh, are advertised in uh, different ways um, I only just want to uh, lead your focus on uh, what's really going on but what we can say so far is that there are differences and that there are of course balloons which are able to fulfill our requirements and you see this one is really able to do a great job as long uh, we are talking about common mode attenuation okay and uh, here is our brilliant balloon which uh, we uh, found the excellent common mode uh, attenuation but we have to test the second uh, parameter and that is the SWR and uh, as we already know we want to see an excellent SWR about or along uh, the entire bandwidth and here is our result and oh oh this one is not usable have a look so we are already at uh, let me check here uh, 
So this here is our 1.5 here. This is our 1.5 line. This one here, all right. And you you see uh, we are already crossing the one the SWR one to one point five line at ten point six megahertz, and then it is going up up to uh, over one to two SWR. And ah, uh, so now we thought we really have a good balloon which is uh, doing a good job concerning our um, common mode uh, attenuation, but it is not doing a good job concerning SWR, and that is ah, uh, ah, uh, failing, ah, uh, hopeless. And you may already wonder, how can that happen right now? And, mm, you know, it depends on how you put uh, the turns here onto the core and it uh, depends on the used wire. If you do not have uh, the right uh, wire, then you have exactly the behavior we have seen right now. And in this case, it is due to the fact that the used wires here on the core um, is not uh, 100 uh, ohm impedance. So that means two wires, in, the, in this case a brown and uh, the white wire, which uh, goes along here, needs to have 100 ohm impedance and uh, I have two uh, separate uh, areas one uh, is this here and one is this so we are uh, we have uh, put the turns here on this side and on this side and if this side and this side both have uh, 100 ohm impedance and uh, when we then uh, put this both uh, coils in parallel, then we uh, should have 50 ohm. Um, but it uh, only works if these wires really have uh, 100 ohm, and in this case, it uh, do not have these wires do not have exactly 100 ohm and that is the reason why it is failing and that is again a very important information because you know if you go blind and uh, build your balloon without any knowledge uh, what you need uh, to get good results, then you completely fail with uh, your balloon. So, I mean, uh, okay, we have an excellent uh, common mode uh, rejection with this balloon, but uh, it does not help uh, as long uh, the transceiver which is uh, feeding in here from uh, this side is seeing a high uh, SWR. So that uh, is uh, garbage, right? So therefore we need uh, to investigate it all a little bit more in depth and uh, we try to build a balloon which is really fulfilling our, all our requirements. So a high common mode attenuation and an excellent SWR. And of course, uh, this uh, balloon should be able to handle minimum one kilowatt uh, power. And uh, therefore you need uh, the right uh, core material. And uh, if you use uh, a smaller one, maybe uh, like uh, this here, then of course you uh, cannot go high power. So maybe a uh, core material like this is able to deliver uh, 200 watt, I don't know. And uh, well, if you put two cores, um, if you stack them like uh, this here, so you can uh, 
reach uh, two uh, kilowatt or even more i don't know but uh, that is uh, what you need to consider you need to consider to find the right uh, wiring and uh, well this here is a normal wire and uh, that uh, is definitely uh, not able to handle a kilowatt or more because uh, it will melt because this all gets hot so you need additional um yeah you you really need additional um, information about uh, the used uh, wire so you need a special wire for it and uh, uh, not only that it has uh, 100 ohm it also needs to have um, or uh, needs to be able to handle a kilowatt or even more maybe two kilowatt and therefore you see there are really a lot of things which needs uh, to be considered before you finally have really a nice working and sufficient balloon. Okay, and with all the knowledge we have up to now and uh, with all these uh, uh, points we really uh, have focused on today, uh, we will really stop here this video. So I think that is really a lot of stuff and uh, you have seen uh, where we really need uh, to focus on and uh, I think you already have now a lot of information about what uh, you need uh, to consider uh, to get a good balloon. So let us stop here. So we have all the basic information, we know how we can test a balloon like this and let uh, uh, us uh, do uh, part uh, two. So let us do a uh, next video where we will focus on building a sufficient balloon which is really fulfilling all our requirements and um, yeah, so that uh, will be uh, as well a very, um, a very uh, interesting um, uh, topic. But uh, today, let's stop here. You really can now um, consider all your new information. And uh, yeah, so far, thank you for watching. If uh, you like this video, please uh, give me a big thumb up and uh, let's wait for part two and catch you next time. Bye!